I'd like to take an opportunity to introduce our artist today. First of all, welcome to this episode of Culture Days. Today we're hosting a visual arts workshop for kids. And we have with us Ruth Toy. Art has always been an integral part of Ruth's life through drawing, painting, sculpture, pottery, illustration, graphic arts, murals, theatrical set design, photo ops, and interactive art. Her artwork gravitates towards illustration with a stylized realism, strong in contrast and color. Ruth's eclectic enjoyment of the arts has served her well as an arts instructor in schools, community art classes, private lessons, and paint nights. In these roles, her goal is to promote creative expression, personal accomplishment, social interaction, and enjoyment through art. Ruth is a member of the Markham Group of Artists and the Markham Arts Council. She also enjoys the arts as a musician and through her love for theater. Her life motto is, your talent is God's gift to you. What you do with it is your gift back to God. So without any further ado, I'm going to hand over to Ruth and she's going to show us um, how to create these wonderful pop art words uh, that are used in comic strips. Thank you, Ruth. Hi, it's good to uh, see. I've got uh, some people here. Um, Vivian, uh, Smita, I'm not sure if I could see any others. So um, if you have any questions uh, during this uh, time, please feel free to um, ask and uh, we'll have time for input as well. I hope that you have with you a piece, uh, some pieces of paper a uh, pencil, some coloring um, materials, like um, it would be good to have colored pencils or markers or, you know, whatever um, you would like to color with, um, that would be good. And if you have the sheets that were emailed to you, that would be really good because depending upon your age, some people might just like to color the sheets that we have for the youngest ones and some of the older ones, I'm not sure of anybody's age, um, will be able to actually create your own words. So what we're going to do right now is I'm going to share my screen and show you a presentation about it. And if you have any questions, you can unmute yourself and ask during it. That's okay. So I am going to, it's just going to take me a minute to get into uh, my file um, as, as I talk to you. So um, Let's see, can, um, nope, we don't see that yet. Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna look into, um, I do some teaching, just so you know, through any community center sometimes. Um, and um, I've taught in schools and um, in, different, in different countries in the world actually. Uh, Canada and in Papua New Guinea. Um, so I've done a lot of teaching, just not typically um, this way uh, online, but this is all new for all of us, isn't it? So I'm going to present this screen and it's good, it should come up nice and clear for all of you. So what we are talking about today is pop art. Now pop art um, is actually a movement of art that took place years ago. Um, started in the 1950s and 60s. And maybe many people here are probably familiar with it because of uh, the comic books. It, the actual, the art is the types of art that you will see in comic books. And you see these words, like, thwip, <laughs> how do you even pronounce that with, with uh, um, Spider-Man there? I'm going to get my pointer. Okay. Um, and then you see this comic book here. You see his fist and wham and Batman and Robin. Pow, bam, blap. You see down here, you've got Superman. Pow, bam, boom, kaboom. Those are the types of words that we're going to be doing today. And you see the fist right there. Got like a big pow with smoke coming out and everything. Okay. So Describe the color. So unmute yourself if you can. Maybe you can, can talk and share. And if you don't, that's okay. Um, you can just listen. So what type of colors do you see here? Okay. 
Anybody want to describe the colors? Okay, well, you can just think about it. All well, we have with, with this type of art is very bright colors. And the colors are typically what we call primary colors, red, blue, and yellow. And they're usually solid colors or they have these dots in them that we'll talk about later. Black and white are also used. Now you don't see shading, but you see solid colors. Another thing you see with these uh, comic book words is they're called um, onomatopoeia words. So onomatopoeia words, that's a really long name. You can see all the letters that it takes to, to spell that word lot. And what an onomatopoeia word is a word, okay, can Risha, can you not draw on the screen? Thank you. It's a word that mimics the sound of the action. It's a word that sounds like its meaning. So here you've got pop. That's pop. That sounds like pop. Say the word pop with me, okay? Say it out loud, pop. How about smash? This one is smash. And it sounds like smash when you say it. Or this word here, splat. Splat. It sounds like it. So there's, there are other words like that too. Can you think of some words? What are some words that are onomatopoeia words? Can anybody think of any? Can you think of any onomatopoeia words? You can talk out loud if you like. Any ones you think of? How about, um, boom. oh, great, great. Boom, good. Any other words? Can you think of another word? Crash. About, crash, yeah, that is good. And smash, oh, we got smash there. And pow. And even the word that we use for, for, wow. yeah, and zoom, and wow. Okay, those are all, those are all good words. Thank you for sharing those. So here are some words, words you can see them here on the screen. Pow, wham, kaboom, bang, shazam, slam, boom, zap, kapow, plop, burp. Everybody likes that one. <laughs> Slurp, wapow, karoom, bam, splat, whoosh, clank, splonk, whack, poof, slam, snap, zoom, kerplop. So those are all onomatopoeia words that sound, the words sound like the action that's taking place. Okay, another thing about onomatopoeia words, well this pop art, is that we want to try and make the words look like the sound. So pop, here, this word pop, notice how the letters are rounded and it's got rounded clouds around it and rounded clouds here, and it's a rounded sound. Pop, pop, feels rounded. What about bang or smash? Those types of words would be angular, like sharp lines. These are sharp lines. Okay, so it's a different style of lettering and different shapes of words, of, uh, of different shapes that go together with it. Here are some more. Splat, look, it looks like, that looks like a splash of water or a splat of something liquidy. Smash is very sharp. Pop is very rounded, like poop, pop. Okay, and that's what we're doing with these words. So there's some other things about these words before we start drawing or coloring that I want you to think about. And one of the things is that these words use contrast. Contrast, what contrast is, is when things are different. They're not alike, they're even opposite. So one way that we see contrast is dark outlines. So when we have a dark outline, we can see the difference between the white background and the word itself. There's color contrast, and that means 
light and dark colors and warm and cool colors. So here you've got a light yellow on top of a darker blue. And it's also what's called warm colors, colors that are like fire, like yellow and red and orange. And those types of colors are contrasted with cool colors. So if you think of like snow, like the blue is a cool color with a warm yellow on top or a, a blue with, um, yeah, here's more yellow. And, and you've got also got size and shape contrast. So you've got some big, big cloud type um, clouds here. And then you've got some small clouds. You've got some big shapes behind and a big word. And then you've got some small stars, some little stars. Okay, then there's also texture contrast. Can you see on these words, there's a whole bunch of dots. In some places, they're smooth. So sometimes it's smooth, sometimes it's textured with these dots. And these dots are called Bende dots. And Bende dots are named after the man who invented them. So these are as an example of Bende dots that you'd see in comic books and in pop art. And they're just little dots evenly spaced and it creates color and texture by using them. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to try and figure out how we might color these pages. And then we're going to also create these pages ourselves. So um, what I would like you to do is take your picture that has wow, and we're going to color it. We're gonna figure out how we want to color it. So for example, you can choose, I want you to choose whatever, whatever colors you like to choose. Now I'm going to give you some examples, but you are going to choose how you want to do it. So you can think about, well, what colors do I really want to use? Okay, so you might want to think, okay, and then they're usually going to be red, yellow, and blue. But you know what? You can use any color you like. So um, what I think I'd like to do is I think I want to use my wow since red colors stand out the most. And I'm going to color this wow with my red. So you can do the same. So get your page. And if you like to do it with red, you can do it with red. If you want, you can do it with another color. So you can color your, your letters now. You see me coloring that in? So red or yellow or blue, either one of those, any one of those would work. So I'm going to color this in and sometimes, you know, coloring, you, we just, you know, everything we do, we do the best we can. Don't ever compare yourself with anybody else. Okay. Because, you know, we're all created differently. We're all, we are at different ages too. And people of different ages can do things uh, differently. Like as you get older, some things get easier. As you get older, some things get harder too. So we just do the best for who we are. And don't compare yourself. We you just enjoy doing this. And you know what too? You, sometimes people think, oh, I can't do that. I'm not, a, I'm not that great of an artist. You know what? We're, none of us are gonna be like the famous artists. Well, we might be, but you know, we're not Rembrandts and Picassos and, and all the, you know, we're not these famous people, but you know, we do art because we enjoy it and it makes us feel good and we enjoy creating things. Yeah, so that's, that's why I do art and I just love it. So now I've created my word. Wow, you might still be coloring, that's okay. Now I'm gonna think what type of color do I want to use for, the, for this, this other part here? And, uh, the big shape in the background. Now I want to use a contrasting color. I want to use a different color and I'm going to try and use maybe some textures in there. So you could either color it solid or you could create dots. Either one. You could, you could do, use these dots, bende dots, 
and you don't have to worry if they're not like 100% um, even. That's okay, that's gonna be hard to do. So you could either create dots or you could color the whole thing in. Okay, so I'm gonna color this one blue. Nice and bright, because it's a good contrast. This is a cool color. Makes Blue makes me think of snow in the winter. And it's and other cool colors, greens, cool color, um, some types of, well, some types of green, some types of purple, but the most cool color is blue. And when I say cool, I mean like, hey, that's cool. I mean like cold. That's just the, the um, it's kind of funny thinking about uh, colors as, as having temperature, but that's the way artists talk about them, it's cool and warm colors. Maybe you've learned about that if you're in school, you've learned about that. Okay, so keep coloring. I think it's a lot of times easier to color on a piece of paper than on, on an iPad. But usually if I'm working on my iPad, I can zoom in and, and color things, color things uh, close up when I get to the edges. But that's okay, we just do our best here and get it all colored in. And there we go. Okay, after we do this, uh, or we'll talk about the next one and how you might like to do that later on, on your own. But after this, I'm actually going to show you how to create your own word. You could even make your name into a special word like this. Okay, so there we've got the background colored. Now I'm going to switch to a different color for the stars. Now I think of course that stars should be yellow. That's why I kind of saved it for this. So I'm going to make all my stars yellow. And you don't have to do that. You could make the stars different colors. You could make them yellow or red. But part of the reason, like I said, I made the wow red is because in art, we use colors like warm colors, like red and yellow, when we want something to stand out because they say that warm colors advance and cool colors like blue recede. That means they go back. So when you look at something, you'll see it first if it's either red and white actually comes out at you too. Okay, there we go. So there is our first onomatopoeia pop art word or comic book word. Okay, so I'm gonna go, I'm gonna clear this. So I'm not sure where you are. You, if you're not done, you can continue coloring later. I've cleared that. And then I'm going to go to my next screen and we're just gonna talk about what colors we might want to use. So for me, when I look at this, um, when I think about what I might want to color, I think about what, what do I want first? So I think, oh, I really want these, uh, these little puffs. Um, right oh I'm gonna show you these puffs right here see that I'm coloring I'm not gonna actually gonna color that I want those to stay clear I want them to stay white so what I want to do then I'm just gonna a lot of times when we when we create words we have to plan in our head so I'm gonna think very I'm gonna think okay if that's white I want to surround it by blue if that's blue I want a contrast between this blue and the next part so I think I'm going to do yellow in this part and that'll make a contrast because yellow is a light color and blue is a dark color and then that means I'm going to do red for my my letter boom and I think of boom as being red anyway there we go and those are the types of colors and I think I can even make some of my little stars yellow and there'll be a bit of a contrast so some of so some of these will be white and some will be yellow Okay, I think that's how I'm going to do this coloring um, for, for this one. And um, this area here, I'm gonna color in black. Um, let me see, no, I'll do, yeah, I'll do in black. See this area here, I'm coloring. That, I'm gonna leave white, okay? We're actually going to leave that white and it'll, it'll, this will look really good. So we might come back to the, coloring this word. And for the ones who are younger, 
I would suggest that you can just color these. That's okay. Um, you don't have to go do any more than simply coloring these words. But for those of you who would like, we are going to learn how to create these words. So here are some words that we could create. And you are welcome to create any word that you would like to create. So take a look here. Here are some ideas, or maybe some of the ones we talked about before. And if you would like to, to quickly draw a little sketch or do something where you, you've got, oh, this is what I wanna do, okay? You can, you can do that. Or you can copy the one I end up doing, right? So those are just some ideas. Do we have any questions so far? Is anybody, everybody okay? All right, so to create a pop art word, we're, this is a step-by-step -step plan, what we're gonna do. First of all, we're going to choose a word. And you know, I think I'm gonna use the word Zoom, just because, you know what, that's what we're doing right now. And even though Zoom is like this electronic platform that we use to communicate, uh, Zoom is actually a word that means like Zoom, you go fast, boom, Zoom. So we're gonna do that. So I'm gonna plan out my word. Now Zoom to me, kind of sharp, kind of, I would use like elongated or long shapes to go with it. And I would use long shapes for my, and, and sharper shapes for my letters too. So that's the style of lettering that I'm going to use. And the shapes I'm gonna use, yeah, I think I'm gonna use long kind of strips to go with it. And I'm gonna draw sketches on a, on, on a scrap of paper. We'll, we'll do that. Um, and then after I draw on a scrap of paper to get the idea of what I want to do, then I'll create a good copy. And I'll do the good copy by using bubble lettering. And I'm gonna show you how to do bubble lettering. Okay, then we're gonna add the large shapes and small shapes. Then we're gonna outline the letters in black and add black shadows. Then we will plan the colors that we use and the textures if we want to add the bende dots. And then we're gonna color the words. So that's what we're, we're going to do. Um, I'm gonna to go to the next slide. And we're going, to, we're going to draw bubble letters. Okay, so I'm gonna teach you how to draw bubble letters, first of all. Now I'm gonna start by doing um, the bubble letters um, very lightly, okay? So how you're gonna draw a bubble letter is first draw the letter you want to use. So we're just gonna do just one letter for now. We're gonna do a D. Let's just draw the letter D. To do a bubble letter, draw around that line. So draw on the inside. There we go. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna draw this with a different color so that you can tell the difference. I'm gonna draw this with blue. So this is going to be the, the actual letter we're gonna keep. Drawing on the inside of that letter. And if I wanna make it like this D over here, this D, then I'm going to go around it on the outside. And I'm gonna go a little bit past and come back in. And a little bit past and go back out. There. Then what I can do is I can get my eraser and I can get rid of that black line and that black line and I'm left with the D. There we go. That's how we do the D. Now, what if you want to have a few letters together? So that's one letter. So, but we usually want to have more than one. So we're going to do the wow. So what we do for that is, oops, is we're going to draw the word wow in capital letters and we're going to leave a space between them. There's a space. Wow. Oop, that one's too skinny. I'm going to undo that. Make your letters pretty, pretty wide. Okay, there. Now I'm going to use blue again to go around it. So I'm going to trace around that. And this is where you can change the way that you make a word. So this one here, I'll draw this letter very angular or very, like kind of just sharp. Okay, 
And, and then I'm going to go around this O. And around the W. And they don't have to touch. Because one thing that we're going to do with this is with onomatopoeia words, we tend to have black outlines. So there I've just created that and I'm going to, so you can be drawing around, drawing the word wow yourself so you can learn how to create these bubble letters. And then I'm going to use a thicker, darker line and with black and I'm going to create a shadow. And the shadow is always going to be on one side of the word. So I'm just going to create this shadow. This, that's my, okay, I'm going to create the shadow on the right side of the word only. So on the right side, on the right side, and that's going to go behind the other letter. I'm going to do it on the right side, the right side, and the bottom too. Actually, we'll do the bottom as well. Ruth, we yes? just have 10 minutes left. Okay, great. All right, so that's the way to do that letter. Okay, so there's your bubble letter tracing on the one side. Okay, clear. Okay, if you want to do, there's also the difference between doing bubble letters. If you draw, um, some letters can be, if I did this uh, W, I can make the W very rounded, or I can make the W very sharp, okay? And you can stylize the way you make it. It doesn't have to be exactly right around it. You can make it a little bit stylized like that. All right. Okay. So what we're going to do now is we are going to do a, a one word together and I'm going to do the word zoom. Okay, so I'm going to start with a line and I'm going to write the word Z. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? Clear. One thing about this, is we can make the zoom go from small, maybe we'll do big to small, yeah. Small, get bigger and bigger and bigger, okay? So then that in itself makes, makes it look like it's going zoom from small to big. Okay, now I'm going to go around that word. So I'm going to, draw around the letters very angrily, very sharp. O's you can't do very sharp, that's okay. And I'm drawing around these letters as they're getting bigger and bigger. M's can be very sharp. Actually, There we go. And then I'm going to erase the lines in between. You can use your eraser. There we go. So that's my first word. Now I want to think of some shapes to go around it. So um, I think I'm going to use some, some a different color for this. You probably should use that. Okay, so I'm going to make some long shapes. So I'm going to go zoom. And I'm going to try and continue that word. You can even just keep drawing it across because we'll color over it. Zoom. Go right across because we'll color right over it. 
zoom. And I didn't leave myself enough room here. Okay, so those are some shapes that we have. Okay, and so then we're gonna we can fill those in. So um, now what we're gonna do is we're going to um, make what are there some other other things we can add to it maybe we can add some puffs so make three little lines and then draw a cloud around it poof one two three they get bigger as they go so start small and then at the end you make a poof poofy poof and you can make a double one. One, two, three, poof, poof. You can make a poof like that. Okay, one, two, three, poof. You can add some poofs there, okay? So now what we're going to do is we can color our letters. And so we'll color, color it in. So you can color in your, your Z, O, O. Now I would have normally, actually I, I would have normally done this in red because it stands out more, but that's okay. I'm gonna, gonna do this this way. Actually, you know what? I'm changing my mind. You can, you can stay with the red what you're doing. I think I'm gonna do this one in yellow because then I'm gonna do the clouds in blue. Zoom. Okay, color the, the letters all in. And after that, we'll, we'll do dark outline. Okay, here we go. See, we're gonna color right over those other, those lines. That's why when you start drawing it, make sure you draw very lightly. And then as you go, you can draw lightly with pencil. And then when you color it in, you can either erase the pencil or go right over the pencil. There, so we've colored that word in. Bigger to smaller. You can you can then add some of your red for the background for for the large shape. This is our large shape in the background. And you can color this in more neatly. And you can you can be adding after we're done the class. You can continue to work on this. And you see, you'll see it behind. You see a little bit behind. Some of this will disappear with our black outline, so. Okay, so. Actually, maybe I'll just do it like this. And our black outlines will make some of this disappear, but not all of it. Okay, and the last part, zoom here. There, okay. Okay, now what really makes it stand out with, with um, this type of work is get in the black because these types of omnipada Ruth, we just have less than a minute left. So okay, okay, great. So here we are. So outline everything. You can outline the whole thing in black, but then make shadow letters, shadows on the one side of each. Okay, so you can outline the letters completely in black and then make even bigger shadows on the one, one side of the word, okay? All right, so that's what you're gonna keep doing. And then you can color your clouds in blue maybe. And there you've got your, your Zoom word, okay? So I'm going to stop presenting. All right. So I hope you enjoyed doing that and you can use the different colors, any colors you like to create your own Zoom words and color in the pages that you have. And you could make your name into a Zoom word. You could 
do whatever you like and just have fun with it. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this, uh, looking at pop art from the 1950s and 60s and the culture that they had in that day. And you can use it with their comic books and uh, take, take, take a look at comic books next time you get a chance and, and see um, how they've used the, the Zoom, these, uh, these types of words. Okay. Thank you, Ruth, for this amazing workshop. The replay video of this workshop will be available on Facebook, on Malcolm Arts Council's Facebook for all who were unable to attend. So, you know, you can share with your friends and we would love to see the wonderful pop art that all the kids are creating around the city. Mm -hmm. Thank you and have a great day, all of you. Take care.